All right, welcome back YouTube. I know it's been forever and a day since I've done a video. That's just apparently my thing now, especially with the dumpster fire of 2020. That's, it's just been great. So what I wanna show you guys today is TMS on your Apex radio. Yes, that's it. You heard it right. There it is, finally. If you've ever watched the TMS How To on an XTS 5000 video I've got, it's basically the same thing. The big difference is where this stuff is at in the code plug. If you're new to Apex, you're in for culture shock. They have moved everything around and things can be a little convoluted sometimes. They, if you're used to programming in XTS, it's vastly different, although it's the same at the same time. I don't know how else to explain that. Anyway, let's just get into it. So radio wide, we need to come down here and set a soft ID and username. You also need to set yourself a pin number and check the login enable, okay? Set yourself a login unit ID as well and since you're here, check that alias enable and set your radio ID, alias number, whatever you want there. I just make it all the same. 3110 is my radio number. I just use the same for all of that. Now your pin number, you can set to whatever you want, typically four digits. I think you can go up to six or eight, I don't know. Four digits is more than enough and we should be good to go there, all right? Everything else in here, features, location, all of this other fun stuff is basically however you want your radio set up. We really don't have anything else to set in here for TMS. Next thing that we need to do is head on over to menu items and give ourselves the option to open the TMS menu. So from your list of available stuff in here, you're gonna select TMS. As you can see, I've already got it in here, cool. I believe you can assign a hardware button to that, I'm not sure. I have always preferred to use just a menu soft key for that, because why take up a value hardware button if I don't need to? So make sure that's in there so we can open up our TMS menus. Look at our inbox, look at our sent, we can delete messages, whatever else you wanna do in there, it's all fine and dandy. Next thing we need to do is come down to data wide under data configuration. As you see, I've got two IP addresses there. Remember from the 5000 video, they must be different. So I've got decimal one and decimal two. You can set your IP address to whatever you want. It doesn't matter. This is actually the default address that came with the code plug in here. So I'm just gonna leave that, make sure they are different. Subscriber and peer must be different. The other thing is our address assignment type for peer, it must be set to dynamic. So if it's not, just simply click that little drop down and change it to dynamic, you are good to go. This nifty little box right here, direct TMS content display. When you check that box, what it does is when the radio receives a text message, it automatically opens up the TMS menu on your screen. You don't have to try to scroll left and right or push a TMS button or anything. It just automatically, boom, puts you into the inbox. There's your stuff right there. Pretty cool feature, pretty handy. It's a nice way to cut out time trying to push buttons and all of this other crazy stuff. Everything else we can pretty well leave alone with the exception of our quick text message list. If you have a Model 2 radio without a full keypad, you are going to want to add messages in here. This is how you're going to select your messages to send if you don't have an ability, predictive text, key everything in because you've got a full keypad. So Model 2 guys, you're gonna to want to add your text message lists here. Model 3 guys, you can also use the quick text message list and have predefined messages that you too can send. Even though you can free text everything, you can also select messages from this. But Model 2 guys, Model 1.5 guys, so if you've only got a screen, you're definitely going to want to set some of those messages up in there. Everything else in here we can basically ignore. It's all good to go. Done. Boom. Next thing we need to do is check out our data profiles here. If you don't have one, make one. If you've got one, cool. You can rename it to whatever you want. We need to make sure our data profile type is conventional and not trunking. Next thing we need to do is change our packet data mode to repeated. If you've got a repeater that's got some stuff on it, that's fine. Everybody else in the free world that is not using a repeater or fixed network equipment, you're going to want to select direct. You can leave your 60 and 20 values in there. 
I would also suggest checking that auto-generate IP address and auto-generate target IP address. So this way, your radio is just going to do what it needs to to get that message sent out over the air simplex. Even if you have a conventional repeater, this will work through that repeater as long as that repeater is going to pass those data messages for you. Packet data mode, direct. If you've got some funky setup or you've got some high speed low drag stuff on the back end of your system, cool, select whatever you need to there. But the vast majority of the free world is going to want to select direct on that. Everything else is pretty well good to go here. We do need to change our ARS mode to non-server. Unless again, you've got an ARS server, that's cool, do what you need to there, but the rest of the free world, we're gonna wanna select non-server. So this way our radio is not holding up messages, waiting for a server that's not there to tell it what to do, and all kinds of fun, fun stuff. Now you're thinking about all this other stuff, your port list, all that other crap, just leave it alone. It's fine right where it's at. So conventional systems, this is this whole demonstration video is gonna be based on P25. You can set up your MDC system. As you see, I've got one there. So conventional system name, name it whatever you want. Make sure you select Astro. All your other normal stuff that you would fill in there, your you know individual IDs, 3110, whatever. However that's gonna work for you, boom, make sure you've got that in there. Data profile selection, make sure you select the data profile that we had just edited. So this way, this conventional system is going to use that data profile for all of this stuff. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is check that messaging box. Really important that you do. Model two guys, it's extremely important. Model three guys, it's also important, just not as extreme. The rest of the stuff, you know, pick and choose whatever you want. When we get down to CAI data registration, go ahead and check that box. Some people say it doesn't matter. Some people say it's absolutely imperative that you have it. Your mileage is going to vary depending on how else you have your radio set up, what you've got on your back end, your system, you know, repeater wise, whatever. My suggestion is just go ahead and check it. If it doesn't work, come back in, uncheck it and reprogram your radio. See if it's going to work for you that way. Text messaging service. You're going to want to select list only if you have a model two radio. If you have a Model 3 radio, go ahead and hit that unlimited. That's going to allow you to free text stuff and select from the list. Obviously list only means you can only select from the list. So Model 2 guys, you're gonna to wanna to hit that one because I mean, you know, realistically unlimited is not gonna do you any good because you don't have a full keypad on there. So the rest of this stuff, again, set however you need to for your conventional system and you're good to go. In the other video I talked about Caller ID lists. Well, in Apex, they call that the UCL or Unified Call List. You're going to want to add some contacts in there, especially if you have a Model 2 radio. Model 3, guys, it's also pretty handy, so you might want to do the same thing. So as you see, I've got three contacts in here. If you don't have anything or whatever, simply hit that, that add a button there and add your contact name. Let's call this one Frank, and he's going to have radio... 5,000. All right, so you're not done here. What you need to do is select that contact and then come up here, alternate mode. That's what we need to edit all of this stuff. So what they did is you have one contact name, Frank, and for Frank, you can define all these other different systems with his radio number. So what we're after here is a conventional ID. We need to say he is going to be on that P25 system and his ID number is 5000. Now pick and choose whatever number you want, however you want to set up your caller ID list based on your radio numbers, there you go. Your call type is going to be individual obviously. I mean if you've got group, you can send a text message to a group, that's cool too, you can do that. And MDC, you can add one for that as well if you've got an MDC system set up for analog. Again, just change his ID and it's good to go in there. All right, so now that you have your call list set up or your, your radio ID number set up for Frank, to go back, hit that checker box button up there and boom, there's the rest of your list. So that's how you add contacts to your Apex radio. If you were on a trunking system, you can add you know trunking IDs, all kinds of fun stuff. Pretty cool thing. So that's basically it for TMS on an Apex. Now that you've got all this done, hook your radio up, turn it on, 
program it and give it a go. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Try to get you the down and dirty, quick, fast, and in a hurry as we can. Like and subscribe, all that other fun YouTube stuff, whatever they like to say now. Alrighty, guys, I'll see you on the flip side.